Highest 10 Church for the Eucharistic celebration on the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Join me in praying the stewardship prayer. It's the orange prayer uh, card in your pew. Dear Heavenly, Dear Heavenly Father, Father, my, my parish, parish is composed of people, people like me. me. I, I help make, make it what it is. is. It will it be will friendly be if I am. am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring other people into its worship and fellowship if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and love, and a parish with a noble spirit if I, who make it what it is, am filled with these same things. Therefore, with your help, O God, I shall dedicate myself to growing our faith by being all things that I want my parish to be. To be. <clears throat> please turn off all cell phones if you've not already done so, and please stand and greet your neighbor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring to our mind our sins and ask God mercy and forgiveness so that we may become worthy to offer this sacrifice. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Jesus. 
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor there shall be nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something so that no human being might boast before God is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this coming week, we celebrate our Catholic School Week. So I think it's wonderful to have the readings 
today. It's all about the uh, Sermon on the Mount. Actually, we read the preamble of the Sermon on the, on the Mount, the uh, Magna Carta of our Christian faith. I think I said last week, last weekend, Matthew always tries his best to see how the scripture fulfills in Jesus Christ. So this is another attempt again to clear that idea again. If we have a Moses on the Mount of Sinai receiving the Ten Commandments and of course the Torah, the book of the law, from God the Father. Moses was on the mount. God was there, but God was invisible. Moses could not see God. And the people of Israel, they were on the plain waiting for Moses. So let's keep that in your mind. In the New Testament, we have Jesus on the mount and he is visible. The disciples are with him. But you will see the crowds are waiting on the plain. All kind of poor people, all kind of diseases, illness, struggles, they are waiting there. His disciples are with him on the mountain. And he is giving them the new commandment or the new covenant of the kingdom of heaven. Of course, Matthew, kingdom of heaven. And see the comparison. Moses, invisible God, people of Israel. In Jesus, Jesus is visible God, giving to his disciples, but the crowd, entire humanity is represented. A fulfillment, the real fulfillment of the Old Testament in Jesus. Jesus presents himself as the Messiah of the world, and also the fulfillment of the commandments, the law of the Old Testament in him. It takes it to fulfillment, and that's where slowly, gradually, we will come to know that why God the Father gave them the Ten Commandments. The reason is what we read, what we read in this gospel passage that takes us to the great two commandments. Love God, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that's the fulfillment. God the Father was preparing a people for this purpose. In Jesus, that is fulfilled. And of course, blessed, 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 that simply means congratulations. In biblical times, it means congratulations because you have accomplished something great for God. In his eyes, you have done something great. People may not see it that way, don't worry. In the eyes of God, you have accomplished something. I said we, this week is uh, the Catholic school week. How do we put this all together? Well, we have this church here in Moberly only for one purpose, right? To preach this gospel, to help people hear the gospel of God and help them live it. And that's the only purpose we have a Catholic school here. When we speak about the Catholic school, what comes to your mind of in Moberly? Usually you get, when you say Catholic school, what comes to your mind is that building on the other side, right? Yeah, that's good. There's no, nothing wrong with it. You are right. But Catholic school, when we say Catholic school, has actually three campuses. Every Catholic school is a three-campus reality. All three places, there are teachers and lessons. Do you have any idea what are those three campuses? Every Catholic school has three campuses. There are teachers on three places. They all teach, and lessons are taught and also lived. The number one campus of our St. Pius in the school is where you are sitting now. The church. The most important lesson that a kid learns is here. 
in the church this mass is number one lesson and celebration for every catholic kid whether they go to catholic school or else so this is the number one campus and which one is the second campus the school right you are wrong <laughs> which one is yeah i'm sorry yeah which one is the second campus your home yes you're right wonderful wonderful yeah that's the second campus of a catholic school your home and the parents are the teachers the brothers and sisters are the teachers the grandparents are the teachers they make sure that the children learn and live it with them together family your home is the second campus now we come to the third campus of course now you know what that is right the school is the third campus we have teachers they teach no way you can separate three, these three campuses you know way they all should work as a team the church your home and the school all together otherwise we fail as a church we fail as a home we fail as a school that's a problem it's one unit we work together what are we achieving here we help our children understand the be attitudes we help our children understand love god and love your neighbor as you love yourself that's all we help our children learn the love of god the mercy of god the forgiveness of god the hope in the lord that's what we help them learn and live together of course we in in the country we have two models of catholic schools number one is a tuition model i was in new york in a parish you know they follow the tuition model that you pay a tuition and then you send your child to the school of course they have mass and all the other activities like what we have here but still the parents pay a tuition for the children in our diocese we don't follow the tuition model we follow the stewardship model what does that mean that means we believe that it is the responsibility of the parish as a family to take care of our children in their growth that's why we call it stewardship model so it's not just the parents who are paying but the whole parish is paying toward the education of our children do you have any idea how much money the parish spend for every catholic student any idea any idea any idea any real idea any real understanding per kid according to our you know uh, financial reports of last year the rice sent me a, a, a note a email saying that per kid we are paying 8300 dollars per kid again you know many of the parents are not rich enough to pay that much so we are not asking anybody to do that right because as a parish we take the responsibility you know small young families they struggle to find a good job or a, you know buy a home and then raise their kids i can fully understand them i can fully relate to them i was a student in rome and uh, for many months i had just 10 dollars in my pocket and i didn't want to use it so i had to walk every day to school and back because i know i can really relate to all those young families who struggle i can understand so it's not about money i am happy if you send your children to church every sunday because stewardship is not about money it's about time and talent if i see the families they come to church every weekend with their children and make them a server so i help them you know be a lector or an usher or we have a lot of ministries in the church 
It's all about being present. I said the most important lesson is here in the church. And if your child says, I don't want to go to church on weekend, and if you as a parent say, yes, that's fine, you are making your child miss the most important lesson in life. And also, the whole purpose of Catholic school is failed. Right? It's present. Your presence is the most important thing. If you bring your children, they come with you. And later they are going to be the parents of their children. They will do the same. It's a chain reaction. You can break it or keep it. It's up to you. If you break it, we fail. If you keep it, we succeed as a church in this place. The other day I had a great time to talk with a five-year-old, okay? Five-year-old. Yeah. She talks really good. She came to my office and we had a wonderful conversation. He taught me all about the Arctic animals, okay? Yeah, all about them. Then she said she likes chicken. She would like to have a big chicken coop for eggs. And she said, did you know that, uh, well, do you know that my eggs are going to be the best? But I told her, well, you should be good, mar good at marketing, right? And then she said, well, my eggs are not going to be that expensive. I asked her why, so that people can buy, poor people can buy. And then I learned more, more about her. When she goes to school, she doesn't go to our school, okay? When she goes to school, on the way, whenever she finds the buildings or the factories where her family members work, she said, stop. Stop talking. We need to pray for them. We need to pray for dad or other people. They work in that building. They are working there. So we pray for them. On the way, if she finds a cemetery or a tombstone or something, she says, well, now we need to pray for the deceased, all the people who are buried there, the deceased members of our family. That is be attitude. That is attitude, or be attitude that Jesus expects from every one of our children. We have all the ways of finding, we try our best to find happiness in whatever we do. Jesus reminds that happiness lasts only for a period of time. Staying blessed, be blessed. Even when you carry a cross, you are being blessed because you're carrying the cross for a purpose. Same as Jesus did in pain, in suffering, in sorrows. We can be blessed. We may not be happy. Life is all about the change of attitude in us. And that's what Jesus reminds us this week and help our children learn it and practice it. If you do it, it will happen. If you don't do it, you're breaking the chain of love of God and love of our neighbor. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
through him all things were made for us men for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church i confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins to look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come amen, amen. we thank our mighty god for our life and blessings and we ask him to give us the grace so that we may continue to see jesus in others that christ may make of his church a humble and lowly remnant who takes refuge in the name of the lord let us pray to the lord that God's justice may move all nations and peoples to observe his law and do no wrong. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who suffer from any burden may receive reassurance of comfort and love from the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus may help each one of us live faithfully and eagerly the life of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples, that their love for each other may be reflected in those around them, providing a sign of Christ's love for us, the Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those celebrating a birthday this month, may the candles that represent the years of your life be a reflection to others of your love for Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in the light of faith may be judged mercifully and welcomed into the Lord's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, which are for the repose of the soul of Wince Gyre, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's offer our own prayers. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God, Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin.
Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dove fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. How mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. 
At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say. us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distresses we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ Lord Jesus Christ who said apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other a sign of peace Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. For the Catholic Schools Week, breakfast by Knights of Columbus on Sunday, tomorrow morning, in the undercroft, all are invited to that. Year and giving statements available upon request. See, please see bulletin for details. Time for anniversaries. Those who celebrate anniversaries this month, please rise for a blessing. Anniversaries this month. Well, we move to birthdays. Those who celebrate birthday this month, Anniversary? Birthday. birthday, okay, okay, birthday, wonderful. Yeah, please rise for a blessing. Wonderful. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of your sons and daughters who recall today the day of their birth and rejoice in your gift of life, love, family, and friends. Bless them with your presence and surround them with your love that they may enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So happy birthday. <laughs> Time for candies. Somebody here? No? Oh. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. You? What do you want? Okay, I will be there. Don't worry. 
Yeah. I don't want to make these two guys disappointed. Yeah, just siblings, so. Your birthday? Mm-hmm. Anyone on this side? Okay. Thank you, Father. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, your birthday? Yeah. Wonderful. Oh. <laughs> yeah, too, yeah. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> your birthday there? People are just hiding today. I don't know what happened. <laughs> They don't want to tell people they have birthday. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And yeah, that's a wonderful, yeah, you're a great celebration. Yes. Wonderful, yeah. It's, yeah, I know your birthday, yeah. <laughs> I wished you already birthday, right? Yes. So you cannot hide from me. I have a birthday on the first. No, I don't want to tell her. Yes, January 1st, you knew that was my birthday. <laughs> I thought that was on 31st. No. No? Judy, that's Aunt Judy. Yeah, okay, got it. Okay. I'm at 31st. Oh, you're 31st, okay. <laughs> that's it? Did I miss anybody? Okay, look like. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, all the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. I guess have to learn that in this case.